Hello, and welcome to the series of tutorials for SOLIDWORKS. And first thing I'm going to do is go through one of the tutorials that comes with the SOLIDWORKS program. Now we're using SOLIDWORKS 2011. The first step is to open up SOLIDWORKS, and you should see this screen here. From this screen, we click on Tutorials, and I've already done that, and this pane comes up. So since we don't need any more of this, I'm just going to make that smaller so that we can have more space out here. Now there are many tutorials here. There's Getting Started, where we'll go to, but uh, they have two full sets including many of the uh, different capabilities that the program has. But we'll just use the back button here. Go to getting started. And we have a choice of five. In our case, we're not going to worry too much about AutoCAD and SolidWorks. We're just going to start with Introduction to SolidWorks. So this lesson does these things. It creates a boss, base the boss, and cut features from sketches. Then we add fillets, these small rounded features, to the smooth edges. Then we make a circular pattern, drawing views, and then adding the center lines and so on. When you use these tutorials and it tells you something to do, for example, this, click new, you can run over it and it highlights it. If you actually click on it because because you can't find it in the screen, all you need to do is click right here and it will show up on the screen over here. So never worry about not finding these uh, buttons as you click on over here it'll show it to you. Eventually you'll find it where they are pretty easily. So we're going to click on this new document here. And up comes the new SOLIDWORKS document. And we want to start with a part. Parts make up assemblies and assemblies and parts are uh, featured in drawings. So parts would come first. This is taking a while, sometimes it does. All right, we are ready. First thing we need to do is click on Extruded Boss Base. Now your window may look a little different. I will try to make it look better. So you have a variety of uh, main tabs here. You have the Features tab, which gives you access to all the different features available. The sketch tab, which gives you access to all the sketch capabilities. Now be careful because there's a sketch tab and the sketch action, sketch mode, if you will. And then there's valuation, dimension expert, and other products. You will almost always be just concerned with features and sketch. So, First thing we want to do is be in Features and click Extruded Boss Base. That button right there. Notice how you have these three planes come up. 
So we're going to click on top. Now, what happened to your plane? Your plane is still there. They just put it in an unseen state so that you can concentrate on your sketch. If you wanted to show it, we can do that too. But first, we're going to click on circle. Notice how it automatically went into sketch mode. We click on circle. And right over here is the origin. Every sketch needs to be somehow related to the origin or else the computer won't know exactly where it is and it will remain in a blue state undefined. So we click circle, we click on the origin, and we're going to move the mouse and see that a preview of a circle shows up. Here we have a radius. As we move it, it gives you that radius of 45 or 32. Doesn't really matter. You can always change that radius. Don't have to get it exact or even close. Notice right now we are in millimeters. So I clicked on the outside here to finish the circle. And if I don't really care about entering in a particular number right here or any of these other options, I can click this check mark, meaning I'm done with my circle. Now notice that this relation showed up, it says that we're coincident. That means the center of the circle is exactly the same point as the origin. Moving on to the next step. Now we're going to add a dimension. Here we use the smart dimension function. If you missed that, you can always click there. Smart dimension. And we're going to select the circle. And here we have a variety of ways of looking at the diameter. So we can pretty much put it anywhere. And then this box comes up, asking us how we want to define it. Just enter 128 as the instructions tell us. And then make the circle 128 millimeters. We're done with dimensioning. So we hit that green check mark. And we can do other sketching. Okay, now that we're done with our sketch, all we needed was a circle. We want to click the exit sketch. You may either use this button or this button. Either one will do the same. That just means that you're happy with what you've sketched so far. Notice how the sketch turned black after we put in the diameter. That means the computer is fully capable of identifying everywhere, every point, every curve. It's fully defined. Now we extrude this circle up. And we want it to be blind. In other words, we have a very specific defined number that we want to make this and we're going to set the depth here instead of 10 millimeters which is the default to 7 millimeters. You can also click up and down on this. It's not always as helpful. You can even though grab this arrow and notice how the, the number changes on the left. I'm giving a scale there. Instead Seven. Be done with that. Now, if I wanted it to be two inches, and I didn't feel like making uh, a uh, conversion, I can simply type in two 
I N, and it will change it immediately and create that conversion right here. Seven millimeters is what we really want. We are done with that. Screen check mark. Go to next. We're going to click save. There's the save button right here. I don't have the MT155 folder, so I'm going to create it by just clicking on new folder. Type in MT155. In that folder, I'll create this as pressure plate and hit save. Click on next. Next step click extruded boss base again. And we're going to select, we don't have to select a plane this time. This time, we don't have to select a plane. We can select a flat surface of something we've created, such as this plate. So we will select this top face. And then we're going to change our point of view, our perspective. You can do that by clicking on this button. There are many different perspectives that we can look at. In this case, we're going to click on top, but we could have clicked on any of the other ones, the sides, or different types of perspectives. Next, we're going to go back and click circle and move this to the origin. And we're going to make another circle like this. All done. Don't need to really nail down the size of the set. Then move next. And we need to mention this a little bit. Just as we did before. Type in 75. Should be all set. Moving on. going to use another one of these sketch entities called offset entities. So you can simply select an entity such as a circle and create another one just like it exactly a certain distance away. So in this case we want it five millimeters away. Inverse. Then click on the circle. And then hit check mark, making a five millimeter wall around for this feature. Coming up next, we get out of the sketch that we wanted. And just for fun, I'm going to change this to a trimetric viewport. And we're going to keep it blind. And we're going to a depth of 12. One can spin 
your window like this simply by holding your middle mouse button or if you have a scroll button you can push that down like, a, like it's a button and then move the mouse around and you can change the position as much as you want. Go back up here and click over to Trimetrics and it will change. Next. We'll click Extruded Cut. And we'll again select the top face of the part. And then we're going to change our orientation so that we can look straight down at it. Then make another circle. Moving a little slowly. green check marks and we will dimension again you'll notice we have a kind of a pattern here where we sketch make sure it's all good then we dimension it and make sure that the sketch again turns black Happy with that. Put the green check mark. And while you're done with your sketch, since this time what we're doing is we're doing a cut, and we don't want to necessarily just go one millimeter or even ten millimeters per se, no matter what thickness this plate ends up being, we want it to go through everything. So instead of blind, we have through all, making sure that it's on the correct side. So we're coming down through. If you click on this, it would simply go the other direction. If we click on this, instead of cutting out the inside, it would cut out the outside. So the just this edge, and, oh, that's not. But if you want it instead to go up instead of down, click on that button and it will go up. Now, in this case, that doesn't make any sense because it won't be cutting anything. So the defaults that it picked out are pretty good. So I'll click my green check mark, and that's what we did. We cut out a hole. Next, we can create holes another way, something called the hole wizard. So we're going to go back up to top. Ah, here we have a our standard views. We just bring them up over here instead of having it always go up here. And there's front, back, left, right, top. On top and straight down at the top. I'm going to click on Hole Wizard under Features. Where is Hole Wizard? Oh, I can't find it. Click here and Hole Wizard pops up. Yeah, it take a little while for this to pop up. And what type of hole do we want? We want a countersink. This type right here. And we want to use NC, not NC inch, but NC metric. Flat head screw. Open the flat. 
And for size, not M2, we want M3. Six and under options, we do want some head clearance and we want a head clearance of one millimeter. And down here, we want an added counter bore. And we're going to click on the positions tab. This is where we actually place the holes. So before we go any further, just as a note, all of these options with holes are just a very easy way of making a complicated hole. If you really want to just put a hole, as we did in the last uh, feature, sometimes it's just easier to go through the extruded cut feature rather than the hole wizard. So positions. Now if you wanted to make a hole on different levels, not on the same plane, you'd have to right now click this 3D sketch button. You don't click the 3D sketch button now and you want to make them on different levels and you'll have to go back through the hole wizard from the beginning. But since we are only putting them on one plane, we are not going to click on 3D Sketch. We're just going to click on a plane that we want to put the holes in. There. So, in the graphics area, click the base cylinder inside the ring. So, could be here, could be over here, however. And since we didn't quite get it exactly where they wanted it, we can grab it and move it. Escape. Grab that and move it. Immediately, though, notice how that that would be line shows up. That's the intern center line that they're referring to. You can go back to making a point. If you get out of making a point in Whole Wizard, all you have to go do is go back up here and click on the point in the sketch menu. And as I go here, that inference line shows up again. And to stop, we'll just hit escape again. And they drag the first hole onto this inference funnel line again. I've already done that. And we want to hit the check mark. Well, we did not do it exactly as they had in the book, but that's okay. We'll right click on this hole. Go over here. Right click it. Go to edit feature. And here we are, back in the hole specifications. And it's too large. So we want to instead select M6, we want to select M4. And we're going to zoom in. to show you how the zoom feature works. Then back into positions. That'll let us do the smart dimension. And 
we will make the point center of the hole 22 millimeters off from the center of the base feature. And we'll do the same thing for the bottom hole. Unless, of course, you made a mistake. Back over the smart dimension. Notice how what you're trying to, well, whatever you may click on as you pass over it, it turns orange or some other highlighted color. In this case, it was orange for the point. Got a green check mark for that. In hole position. And this is our design tree over here. So we're going to right click on this and delete it. Or in my case, I think we would just suppress it. Show you how to do suppress. Suppressing so will not delete the part. It will make the part disappear. It's still there if you want to bring it back. Right click, unsuppress, there it is. Instead of pressing F to zoom out, I simply use the mouse roller button. Now we will create fillets. I just go to trimetric again. And we're going to set our rate. Fillet radius to two millimeters. We're going to select up here. Notice how face one shows up in this blue box. This is simply the list of the things that will be radius. In this case, the faces have two edges, so each of those edges will be radius by two millimeters. Next is check. And here are the radii. Going back to extruded boss base, we're going to again select this top face. And we go to top. In order to continue with this sketch, we need to use a center or construction line. And we'll use a center line here. If you click that little drop down button, you can go down to center line. And just move it over the origin and click to start the center line. And we'll go up 
is about 45 millimeters, so it doesn't matter that much. And since we don't want to make more of them, we can either hit escape or center line again. Let's hit escape. And the next one. We're going to make another circle. Starting at this point at the end of the line. And then just hit check mark and we'll decide its size later. Smart dimension, select the circle. Make it 27 millimeters long. Notice how it's blue at this point. Still blue because it's not sure exactly how far away from the origin it is. You noted it's beside that. Click the center line. And then get 35 millimeters. Continue on. And since we're happy with our sketch, like that. And we're going to extrude this 30 millimeters. Catch a preview. Make sure it's going the right way and so on. Try matching. It's pretty good. Now we'll go back through and do another extruded cut like we did before. We're going to go click select the surface that's on top of the cylinder that we just made. So we're going to extrude our cut down from that surface. We'll make a circle. And then we can just hover here circle and hover here until that point, that center point shows up. And we'll go over to that center point. Click on it. Try that one more time. Center the circle. Don't come all the way to the edge, or else you'll cut the entire cylinder in half. And again, we'll start to mention it. Make sure it's 15 millimeters in diameter. The next set of directions. We should be done with this sketch. And we're going to go through all the gaps instead of going. We've made a hole in there. Again, I rotated this this way simply by holding down the middle or scroll mouse button and then moving the mouse. Uh, 
Now we're going to change how this looks instead of solid with showing the edges. Just for kicks, really show the hidden lines. And we'll make some fillets. Where is the fillets again? Look here. Oh, there it is. there and it's already set to two millimeters because of what we had done with that before so all we need to do are select the different edges that we need to have there so we did have the hidden edges showing so you can get to them with one, and there's another edge there, and this edge, the bottom way as well. And you can all see what it looks like again, the shaded with the edges showing. The bottom. There's that bottom. Now we're going to do something fun, make a circular pattern. Take this particular feature and move it around in the circle. One important thing that can be used in a lot of different situations is this first bit. We put view and temporary axes. View, temporary axes. And notice the center of the major parts, major features, comes into play. And also, the axis of this boss created at the ring. Then we're going to go up to where did that circular pattern go? There is no circular pattern up here. That's annoying. Uh, it's with the other pattern, linear pattern. Go to circular pattern. And this first field is requesting what axis are we going to rotate about? We had, again, these two available, but we want this to go around this ring, so we want it to go around this axis. So we'll click on that axis. And under parameters, we want to have six of them. And you could do the math and realize that 360 divided by six is 60 degrees. Or, if you ever had to change it for some strange reason, who knows what that would be, you can simply click on equal spacing, and it will do the math for you. Make it really easy when you're doing seven. So, What's left to do are the features to pattern. Well, do we really want to do fillet? Not so sure. Let's make sure we get what we want. Just I clicked on that and hit the delete button, and fillet went away. Well, how do I access some of these things that maybe I can't see? Well, 
I can always go to my feature tree right here. It, it could be over here. You can click it there. But it'll show up right here. And we just wanted to do the last things, the fillets. Now, all of those fillets that we created are part of the same feature. So we want that one to go. And we also want that cut extrude, the first part, that hole that we did, and then also the boss that was part of the hole. So just click on those and it'll come into this field here showing up. And we have all of the parts that we need to make five more copies of what we originally had. Here it is. Now we're going to turn off those temporary axes. And we're going to make some more fillets. There we are. One here, and notice how it propagates all the way along. That's the tangent propagation. I didn't have that checked, and only that one edge would go. But since I do have it checked, all of them will be filled. Want to do the inside ones first or as well. So the inside ones will also be done. If we had not put these fillets in, then because there wouldn't have been a tangent between this surface and this surface, that wouldn't have propagated. So it's very important to plan out how you're going to approach each feature and all of the features so that you can sometimes make life easier for yourself and for the next person who is going to work with your model. It's two millimeters still. All right. So don't forget to save early, save often. This concludes the very first part we make in the introductory tutorials.